It's hard not to become a member of Team Riley. <laughs> when you see her and you, you know, get to know her a little bit, it's hard not to become a member. Her heart is enlarged. Her left ventricle is kind of blown up like a balloon. So it doesn't pump as hard and it doesn't as pump as much as it should. And all I really heard was she probably needs a heart transplant. And that started us on a great road, actually, because she's doing so much better now. From heart failure to a normal functioning heart. I attribute it to exceptionally wonderful doctors and nurses here at Texas Children's. No casts, no surgery, nothing, just medication and a lot of love. <laughs> Texas Children's Hospital and Baylor College of Medicine has for many years been one of the great icons of pediatric cardiac care in the United States and indeed worldwide. And our job is to be respectful of that great tradition, but also be respectful of it in a way that will build upon it. There are many hundreds of people involved in caring for children with heart disease and caring for their families. I sort of see it as being the conductor of a large orchestra. Luckily, I'm conducting an orchestra that has truly world-class people. It's very inspiring to be able to work with leaders in different specialties. And putting these different perspectives together is really about what a new heart center does. We all have different ways of looking at the heart, and we all have different levels of expertise of treating different aspects of heart disease. We are partners with surgeons. Surgeons perform open heart surgery through an open chest procedure. Often the heart needs to be stopped. And for some heart problems, that's the only way to correct it. But the fact is there are now increasing numbers of heart problems that we can treat entirely in a minimally invasive fashion without having to open the chest, without having to stop the heart, without having to use a heart lung machine to provide circulation to the body, and the patient can go home the same day. So the advances have been really staggering over the last uh, decade or so. Now, can you just show me, uh, like with one finger, where your chest has generally been hurting you? The center and the left. Uh -huh. And so I understand that um, sometimes moving around a little bit made it better or worse? Is that right? Does any of that hurt when I'm pushing on it? No, ma'am. I look at us as the ones who do the diagnosis, who counsel the families to start with about what their child has and how we're going to manage that. And once a surgeon is involved and, and they do their really critically important part, they're handed back to us as their primary cardiology caretakers. And we work in concert with their pediatricians, of course, to really promote their care for the rest of their life and for whenever they would need reinterventions or something like that. We can now image the heart in ways that we would never have thought possible. Formerly, a lot of the imaging was invasive, in other words, under general anesthetic. We can now get this information non-invasively uh, in a conscious child just lying on a bed watching a video. And so this is an area that's moving forward at a very rapid rate. Our third child, first girl, she had a very large hole in her heart. It was very difficult. I mean, nobody could really explain it, but finally we got to Dr. Altman, and she was able to draw it out and explain it in ways that nobody else had been able to. We are the luckier ones. We got a heart problem that is very fixable. You know, for us, there is a cath lab. There is another way to solve her problem, and we didn't have to go the open heart surgery route like many other families would have had to do. 20 years ago, it was necessarily open heart surgery, and the child would remain in hospital for several days with tubes draining fluid outside the chest and all of those things. And nowadays, we actually enter the groin with small catheters, thread them up to the heart, and either diagnose a heart problem that way or actually potentially treat it. Now the child can go home the same day and go back to school the very next day. Hi, how are you? Hi, baby, how are you? Electrophysiology is another important area. Nice to meet you. A group of people who look after children who have heart rhythm problems. I think most people would say that Texas Children's is the birthplace of pediatric electrophysiology. There are many of these arrhythmias in children that they come in and it's debilitating. And then we take them to the cath lab for some therapy. We could put catheters in specific spots in the heart and evaluate the rhythm and then in one stop, they're cured. Well, your heart sounds great. Thank you. So I think every facet of electrophysiology or heart rhythm disturbances is just advancing mm -hmm. at a tremendous rate. Because of the successes in the care of children with heart disease, there are now more 
adults with congenital heart disease living in the world than children. We've come to realize that we're now going to have to develop new systems for the care of these adults who formerly would not have survived. This, this swelling is not, not bad for you. This, people? Yeah. With the pee, um, no this is about how much swelling you normally have. A lot of these patients are not cured. They're not really fixed. They're sort of temporized with a couple of interventions, sometimes multiple interventions and operations by the time they're 20 years old. Once they turn 18, they become my jurisdiction. We're now able to take almost anything that we would get sent to us, see them relatively quickly, figure out their diagnosis, see what procedures they need, and then get them that therapy. So, so what we're now implying is that this is a new target for treatment. How long will it be before we get the next stage of it now? Really now the focus around our clinical care and around our research is about broader implications of heart disease. This isn't about interesting holes in hearts or funny valves. This is about hearts that happen to be in children, who happen to be in families, who happen to be in communities. What are the implications of that for when the child is three, six, 33, 66 years old. So in order to be able to look in that longitudinal domain, you really need to have integrated care. You really need the team not only laterally on the floor of the heart center, but vertically in the entire west tower that sees children. You need the entire package to make it work well, and I think Texas Children's offers you that. With our new adult congenital heart program, with our new pavilion for women, we can provide this integrated care. And so we can now take a fetus of 14 weeks who has congenital heart disease and look after them until they have their own children, until they are 85 years old. And we can do all of that within the broader Texas Medical Center and Texas Children's Hospital. I now feel like I truly have family at Texas Children's. I mean, I have people that I would call. I have met nurses and people that give me their cell phone number that say, call me anytime, day or night. They truly care. You know, this is the best of the best. These guys don't ever get thanked, you know? The, they only see these kids in the worst conditions. Mm -hmm. It probably means a lot to these guys to actually know that, that a couple who had the worst, out, the worst possible outcome are really still grateful and, and really have the fondest memories of the time that we had and, and appreciate the care they gave our daughter. We felt like we were the only patients they had. So we said, we're gonna raise money in memory of Vanessa, we'll donate to Texas Children's. So we established Vanessa's Big Heart Foundation. The ultimate cure is gonna be found through research. So we knew that you know, the vast majority of what we raised, we wanted to go toward research. And that's how we've allocated the funds that we've raised so far. OK, ready? <laughs> I'm very excited about our new clinical research facility that will allow us, in a very seamless way, take all of our laboratory uh, research and our molecular research and be able to translate them to the child at the bedside. Things here move at an incredible pace. We have about 80 different research protocols that are ongoing. So having something like this that's completely dedicated to research is so exciting and it really is a huge statement about how important clinical research is, especially in the pediatric population. We have possibilities to really push this further uh, than even where it's come. We're starting to get some of the equipment and the resources to do it. If I asked for one specific thing, it would probably be for that, for the resources to continue to do that research. For us to be able to offer everything for these patients, from everything from all of the personnel to the latest and greatest technological advances to the, the, the biggest and best research infrastructure, and especially as we expand now, that's the kind of thing that we're going to need to really set this up, to really solidify what we currently have, but also plan for the future. I believe that these children are a very good investment. If you take a baby who is two days old and you do a really good job on that child, you give them the best chance of survival, then you can see that it's a much better investment of our resources than looking after older people like me, for example. It may not be your child that is having a heart problem, but it could be your grandchild, and it could be somebody down the road in your family, and to know that 
uh, the research is being done now that could prevent things that would affect your family down the line in the future is certainly a call to action for anybody. We couldn't give to a better hospital, a better organization. They want to find new treatments, new ways to make these children better. They would not let a penny go to waste. Hopefully our donation to research will ultimately find a cure at some point and there will be no need for this. But till then, our heart is here at Texas Children's. Thank you.